Good morning. Today I'm going to be working on the corseted lining for the sunset dress. Now, when I normally make corseted dresses for the lining, I cut one full length set of the pattern pieces which form the inside of the dress, and then I cut a second set which stop at the bottom of the corset. Because the colours of this dress are so different at the top and the bottom, so we've got it sort of the midnight blue at the top, then fading to those gold and sunset colours, I'm actually going to use two colours. So I've got this blue satin, navy blue satin, which I will be interfacing and using for the corset at the top. And then I've got gold lining fabric, which I'll be using for the bottom of the skirt. I was worried if I did the dark blue all the way to the bottom, it would be too dark and would show through here. And at the same time, if I use gold all the way up, it might show at the top when I join the lining and the outside together. So this way, the darker part will be lined in the dark colour and the lighter part will be lined in the golden colour. So for the interfacing, I'm using this Birch Shape and Create Fusible Woven Interfacing, which I got from Spotlight. I'm going to start by cutting two sets of my pattern pieces in the interfaced navy satin and I'm going to cut them down to where the original bottom of the corset was. So this is where the bottom of the corset toile was before we altered it into the dress pattern but with the extra width for the where the skirt starts. Um, they're going to be boned just down to where this line is on all my pattern pieces and then once that's all together and boned I'll cut out the skirt pieces and join them onto the bottom. So it's going to look a bit disjointed inside with the blue into gold but I think it'll be worth it for the better finish on the outside. To cut out my corset pieces what I do is I interface my satin first rather than cutting the satin and the interfacing separately and then joining it. I join everything first and then cut it. I find it's just a bit more accurate. So what I do is I put my piece on I cut a single layer at a time. Again, accuracy is everything with corsetry. So if slightest bit off by a millimetre on one layer means the two layers won't sit together properly. So what I do is I lay it on a single layer like this, make sure my waist is right on the grain, and then I draw around it with my disappearing pen. And using the white interfacing on a dark um, colour satin really helps because it means you can still draw on it. So then I draw mark where the bottom is. So I draw all the way around it. I mark where my waist is as well. Once I've drawn around it like that, I can then cut it out and I know it's going to be really accurate. Um, if I cut a single layer at a time, because if you cut two layers at once, sometimes they can slide on each other and again not be completely accurate. So it's a bit more time consuming because I'm doing one piece at a time but it gives really good results, so it's worth taking the time to do. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for all of my pieces for two layers, so seven, 14 pieces. So I've got all my satin cut out, so I've got two sets of all of the pattern pieces. Um, I've also got my labels and my hanging loops ready to put in. Next I'm going to pin all my pieces together, stitch my half inch seam allowance, then I'm going to clip my curves, top stitch either side of the seam to hold the seam allowance open and then just trim off any excess seam allowance. And I'm going to do that for both of these sets and I'm going to insert my hanging ribbons in the side seam of one of them as I do it. So these are my two layers joined together, so that's one layer. And then the second layer has got the hanging loops in the side seams. So you can see for each seam, I've stitched the seam. So I've stitched my half inch seam allowance and then top stitched that open. And then I've trimmed away the excess. So that's what it looks like on the inside. The next thing I need to do is join them together. So I'm going to join them wrong sides together because the top edge will be finished when I join the outside of the dress on. So the layer with the hanging loops will be the inside of the dress. So I'm going to do all of my stitching from this side because that's the side that will be visible once the dress is together. So I'm going to pop the other one right side down on my desk and then lay this one right side up. So the next thing I need to do is join them together by pinning down each seam. So what I need to do is line up my seams exactly and make sure I pin through the seam 
all the way down each seam. So what I do, I line them up like that, pop the pin through and make sure it's lined up. See how that's coming through the seam on the other side? And then come back through. So to do the seam, I tend to do one end and then the other and then work my way down it. So if I pin this end, make sure I'm lined up, not quite. This bit can take a little while and this is when it's really good to have your accurate cutting so everything lines up really nicely. So that's, so that's the one at the top. Maybe just pop a pin. there as well. So now I've got my top and bottom done I can work my way down making sure the whole thing lines up. Cool. So I'm going to pin all the way down this seam and do exactly the same on all the seams and put pins along the top and the bottom as well. Okay so I've got my pins in so I've pinned through every seam and all around the edges as well. So that's what it looks like from the inside of the dress which is the side I will stitch from. And then you can see the pins right through the seams on the other side. So next I need to stitch through all the layers. And I'm going to stitch in the ditch down the seam line. And then I'm going to re-stitch down either side where I've top stitched as well. So three lines of stitching down each seam. I'm going to stitch down the back and along the bottom as well. I'm not going to stitch along the top yet because that's where I'm going to insert the boning from. Um, then I'm also going to stitch all the way along the bottom at the height where the boning's going to stop, which I've got marked on my pattern pieces. So I'll measure that and do a line of stitching all the way along there, which will be where the boning finishes. So here is my two layers completely joined together and I've done my stitching along the bottom where the boning's going to stop. So I've just tacked along the top as well. I didn't want to machine stitch along there because that's where I'm going to insert the boning from and I would have had to unpick it. So the next thing I need to do is to stitch my boning channels. I'm going to be using spiral steel boning in all of the boning channels except the centre back where I'm going to be using this straight steel boning. I sew my boning channels about two mils wider than my boning and I'm going to sew them, I'm going to sew two up the front, I'm going to sew them next to each seam and then in the centre of each panel. Then along the centre back I'm going to mark my half inch seam allowance for when we join the outside of the dress on and then stitch my bone casings just inside of that half inch. So I just wanted to say a couple of things about this method of corset construction. There's loads of different ways to actually put corsets together. I use this method of corset construction for my dresses because it's the flattest and the smoothest and I want them to be as invisible as possible inside of the dress. So because the seams aren't the strongest, it's not suitable if you've got a huge waist reduction. But I tend not to do a huge waist reduction when I'm doing corseted dresses, so it's absolutely fine for what I'm doing. And yeah, it gives me this lovely smooth finish. I'm going to be doing a corset making series soon and I'll show you all different ways of constructing them but this is the method that I tend to always use for corseted dresses where I want the corset hidden inside. So I use this quilting attachment that, and I can set it at the right width for my boning channels. I use this for my seam allowances too. So if I set that to there that gives me the right width to stitch my boning channels. So then I can line that up with that stitching line. and it gives me a nice even boning channel. Cool. So that's my boning channel all sewn. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the corset. 
Okay, so here is the corset with all of the boning channels sewn into place. So I've got two in the centre front panel, and then working backwards I've got one just behind the side front seam, one in the centre of the side front panel, just behind the side seam, one in the centre of the side back panel, and then one just behind the side back seam. Then at the centre back I've stitched in just past my half inch seam allowance so I know that I won't hit the bone when I join the insides and outsides together. And then I've stitched three channels so it will have boning, eyelets and then boning. So now these are all sewn I can cut and put my boning in. So I'm going to be using spiral steel in most of the bone casings and then the straight steel just either side of where the eyelets are going to go in the back. I use a hacksaw to cut the straight steel and I use these cutters to cut the spiral steel. I'll show you how in a minute. So you can tip your spiral steel with these little metal end caps that you squeeze on but I find them a little bit lumpy so I actually just use electrical tape which I cut and tip my boning with um, for the straight and the spiral steel. I wrap a piece over the end and then wrap another piece around it and it stops any sharp ends poking through. I've never had any problem with it being dry cleaned um, and I don't wash corsets because they're steel and the steel is going to rust. So I tend to not even dry clean most of my stuff. I just hang it up to air. But yeah, I've not had any problem with the electrical tape with dry cleaning it. Um, some people use plumber's tape as well, which is even stronger than electrical tape but I found this has always been enough to stop the sharp edges coming through and um, the way I cut my spiral steel there's not a lot of sharp edges so so the tapes just to just to cover those last sharp bits and stop it busting through my satin so to bone the channels with the spiral steel the first thing I do is tip the end of the boning with the tape so I wrap a half width piece over the end and then wrap a full width piece around it to hold it in place. You can see that gives a nice flat end. Again the aim here is to keep it as smooth as possible and avoid any lumps and bumps that might show through. I'm trying to keep this corset invisible inside the dress. So that's my tipped piece of boning. So now I can insert that into the boning channel. I'm just going to poke that in between the two layers. So again some corsets I add extra strength layers and there's more layers to put it between but for a dress like this, this is the number of layers I'd use. Okay, so now I'm going to push that in all the way down to where my line of stitching is. Now, I've only left about a quarter of an inch seam allowance at the top, but I want the boning to stop below that so it doesn't get caught when I stitch the dress lining and outside together. So I'm just going to put my thumb about a centimetre or so down and pull it out holding the boning where I need to cut it. So, let's swap hands, so put my thumb there. So you can see I've got my thumb at the bottom of this sort of curve at the side, and that's the side I'm gonna cut. But I don't wanna cut the one just above my thumb, I'm gonna do the one above that, and all you do is you cut that side one and then the one next to it as well and it comes apart like that and that's how it looks at the end so the only sharp bit is this little bit there which is easily covered by the tape so I'm going to do the same the half width and the full width of tape and then I can push it into the boning channel so now that's in there nice and tightly you can see how it smooths out as soon as you put the boning in I'm just going to pin it into place so you want it in nice and tight but not you don't want to be stretching this out of shape or it will buckle. So put a pin there. I'm going to repeat this and put spiral steels in all of the bone casings that set the two at the centre backs and I'm going to use the straight steels in those and then I'm going to use exactly the same method but I'm going to cut them with the hacksaw instead of with these. And then once they're all in I'm just going to stitch where I've got the pins just to hold each piece of boning firmly inside its boning channel. Okay, so this is how my corset lining looks with all the boning in. So that's the inside that will be the lining side of the dress. And then this is the side that will face the outside that will have the outside layer, the cotton layer, over the top of it. So it'll actually be like that.
in the next video I'll show you how I'm going to make the skirt part of the lining from the gold lining fabric and attach it to the corset and I'll also double check the fit of the skirt over the petticoat to make sure it's the right shape and then make any adjustments to the pattern if I need to before I cut the cotton for the outside layer. Thank you for watching, please subscribe if you haven't already and I will be back soon with the next part.